Luke chapter number 21. This chapter is kind of the sister chapter of Matthew 24, the Olivet Discourse, the end of days and all that juicy stuff. Let's get going. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. You notice how much Jesus talks about rich people and and money and stuff. A lot of people says he talks about hell more than anything. It looks to me like he's talking about uh, riches and where your emphasis should be because we're getting ready to see this story he's telling here. He saw a certain poor widow casting in two mites. He said, Of a truth I say unto you that this poor widow is cast in more than they all, for all these of their, of their abundance cast into their offerings of God, but she of her penury has cast in all the living that she had. So here you got the rich man throwing in just loads of money right in front of everybody so everybody can see them throwing it in and, and say, oh, ain't that good. That's their reward. That's the only reason they do it. They don't do it out of the goodness of their heart. They do it to be seen of men. And they're doing it out of their abundance. What's it matter, you know, if they're throwing in a $100 bill if they've got a $10 million in the bank? But here this woman, all she has to her name is these two little pennies, and she throws the whole thing in there. And uh, Jesus said, you know, she's given more than they all. He says, uh, some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts. He said, as for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall all these things be? And what sign will there be when, when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. First thing right out of the gate, don't be deceived. And is there deception going on more today now than ever? You know. He says, Don't be deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. So you can take that one of two ways. They're going to say, come saying that they themselves are Christ. And you've seen that people, you know, nuts abound, you know, saying that they're Jesus. Or it could be that somebody's coming saying that Jesus really is the Christ. But they preach a different Jesus. That's going on bad too. And that's probably more dangerous than the other. And because you see somebody walking around saying they're Jesus, you probably pass them off pretty fast. But somebody comes saying, you know, he really is Jesus, but... And they start laying out a whole lot of stuff that ain't in here about their version of Jesus. That's very dangerous. Counterfeit. That's the devil's whole game. Lies and counterfeit. He don't, he don't make it so obvious that you know it's wrong. What he does is he tries to get just as close to the truth as he can, but he'll leave out one very important point. And I've, I've preached this message before, uh, something I learned about counterfeit money. The people that are trained to look for counterfeit money. I've seen this somewhere. It's not that they go out, because if they had to sit and focus on every manner of of different stuff to counterfeit with, you know, you'd have too much to look for. What they do is they, they learn what the real thing looks like over and over. So it's just so ingrained into them that the second they see something fake, they know it's fake because they know the real thing. Amen. And that's what we should be doing with this book and the, the Lord Jesus. We get to know him so well that when the counterfeit does come, we say, hey, that ain't right right there. He says, uh, But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Well, again, you know, that stuff's happened forever, and that's that's a sign, but it ain't the end. He says, There's more things to come. Then he says, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Here's a key point right here. But before all these. So that stuff he just listed off sounds like it's going to be later on down the line. Because he says before all that gets here, something else is going to happen. And here's what it is. They shall lay their hands on you, persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And that's what you see throughout the whole book of Acts. They go preach. They bring them in, they put them in jail, they whip them, you know. That's what he's talking about here. It says, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. That's what Jesus did the whole time he's there. 
they're all the time trying to catch him up in words and he, he he always answers questions with his own questions that they can't resist him he's got the wisdom that they don't have and that's what he's going to give to them in that day he says you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren kinsfolk friends some of you shall they cause to be put to death and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. Patience. He says, And when you shall see Jerusalem, compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So he still, he had all that stuff, the earthquakes, the famines. I think we're still in before all that, in this stuff here, because this actually happened in 70 AD. When he says, uh, then when you see all this stuff, the des the armies that surround Jerusalem, the desolations nigh, he says, let them that are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them that are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. And I've heard it said, I ain't put a lot of st study into this, but the, the, the Christians that were there that believed this kingdom gospel, when they saw what he just told them to look for, when the armies got around, they everyone got out and wasn't none lost. But the people that didn't believe, go read that guy I brought up maybe yesterday, that uh, Flavius Josephus, he wrote all the account of that stuff, and it was horrible on the people that got left behind in Jerusalem. Terrible time. They end up starving out and eating, you know, probably eating dogs and eating one another, and it was just awful. But because they didn't believe, they didn't take heed, but the ones that did got out. All righty. He says... Uh, these are the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, for they shall be, there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. That happened. They all got took away. And... Uh, it says, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles shall be fulfilled. Think about this. Look this up. I, I looked this up once. I can't remember exactly, but I think there's still way more Jewish people. I think there's more Jewish people in America than there is in, is in Israel. I know there's more, you know, still scattered about because they all got, you know, after this, everything got wiped out. They got scattered just like Jesus said they would. He says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, all right, I think he's looking toward the future now, just my opinion. He says, look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Amen. He spake unto them a parable, behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you know that su your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. The one that sees all that stuff coming, it's all going to get fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that day come upon you unawares. Always be watching, be sober-minded, be alert. Because if you get caught up in the things of the world... I've dealt with this myself. You probably have too. You start not paying an, enough attention. And uh, he's telling everybody to look because that day's going to come like a thief in the night when he comes back to the earth and all this stuff happens. He says, For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. This is for the whole earth. Remember, you know, people try and say that Noah's flood was just some kind of regional thing. No, it was the whole earth. He told you some stuff that happened to Jerusalem. The stones wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't be lowing one left on another and all this stuff. But now he's talking about something that's coming upon the whole earth. Great tribulation. And he says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. 
And in that day, in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. And at night, he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to, to him in the temple for to hear him. And that's chapter 21. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow.